This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Mr. Ed and Wilbur, Marty J. Wiley, Mark Schmidbauer, and in the center square, Wilbur Neal. All on the new... Tuesday at 6, Wednesday at 10, Thursday at 3. That Darren Pamela Ferdin. Um, oh, no, not another Burgess Meredith show. Um, Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. The world of 60s and 70s television. Welcome to Vast Wasteland. Welcome home. To Vast Wasteland, the video journal of 60s and 70s television. I'm Mark Schmidbauer, along with Wilbert Neal and Marty Wiley. Well, tonight we're going to be talking about those geniuses, Sid and Marty Croft. But first off, I want to tell you, we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV Cable 21. Also, if you want to write into Vast Wasteland, just write box 15, 14, 11, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. Well, let's see, before we, also before we jump into the show, just uh, again, uh, more kudos. If you missed last show and, uh, you didn't, and you didn't see the new opening, there it is again, the new opening. And we want to thank David Park, the man in there. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, Dave. Dave, 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 Dave. Just one of the many Daves on the show. <laughs> and... Uh, the, the work is still continuing on, on, the, uh, on the new backdrop, so... Uh, we Send all the paint you have. That's right. To the <laughs> Send <box>. your donations. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be having a telethon later for that. The paint a -thon. That's right. paint a -thon, yeah. Anyways, Sid and Marty Crop. Uh, Wilbert, what's your first point for the evening? Well, by golly, back in the, um, the late 60s, there was a... A movie that was a, an adaptation of a Charles Dickens movie. And it was a musical adaptation, which was totally unusual for that kind of thing, but still they did it. It was Oliver. That's right. Now, um, so what? Basically, what I'm going to mention here is so the. Uh, so what? One of the major it, it introduced child hunks a, it of introduced the 60s a, came out of that. <laughs> that's true. It introduced a, a child star who. Um, a British child star, too, by the way. You know, um, um, played the Artful Dodger in that. And his name was Jack, Jack Wild. Wild. And, well, by golly, what was it, a year? Or maybe was it... It was about a year after um, 
Oliver came out and was going real strong that um, this new show showed up on TV. And it was... The Jack Wild Show. Well, almost. <laughs> <laughs> that was called The Jack Wild Show. H.R. Puffin stuff. <laughs> Well, see, what you've got to understand, being guys, you would not understand what a major heartthrob he was for, like, a seven or eight-year-old. You, you knew you were too young for Davy Jones, but here was this guy, about your size, with that accent. Mm. Yeah. But I, but I heard recently he's not doing very well in, in uh, England. He was in Robin Hood. Yeah, he's... But before, may, yes. may, have, been just, Hood, may have been just before Jack that. Wild. He looks real funny now. <laughs> may have been just before that. I don't know. But it was on Entertainment Tonight or something. They were doing the, the where are they now type thing. And he wasn't doing very well at the time. Well, he was in Robin Hood. He speaks, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just like, <laughs> that's not, he does more than that. Anyways. So basically, um, you've got this show, HR Puff and stuff, about this, this, uh, this boy named Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. <laughs> And his, his magic flute, Freddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Freddy, actually, but he, he can never quite say Freddy, so it always looks Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> his magic talking flute. And, oh, well, the diamond studs. <laughs> yes, it was just an amazing thing. What's the matter? So anyway, anyway, <laughs> it was an amazing talking like, thing. And, we uh, like lost our brains for a minute. <laughs> this moment of silence was brought to you by <laughs> Time Warp. <laughs> I think so. Anyways, well, let's go on. He was an amazing talking flute, and what happened was, um, well, one day he's just out playing his flute and tripling lightly over the hills and everything, and uh, he sees this magic boat, and the boat says, Come along with me, <laughs> Jimmy, come along with me, and I will take you on a trip far across the sea. <laughs> but the boat belonged to a kooky old witch who had in mind the flute to snitch. And from her vroom broom in the sky, she watched her play materialize. She waved her wand, and the beautiful boat was gone. The skies grew dark, the sea grew rough, and the boat sailed on and on and, and, on, on, and, and on, on and on and on and on and on. on. Kind of like this song. <laughs> but Puff and Stuff was started getting. <laughs> <laughs> but Puff and Stuff was watching too and knew exactly what to do. He saw the witch's boat attack, and as the boy, as the boy was flying back, he called his rescue racer through as often as they rehearsed, and off to save the boy they flew. But who would get there first? By now the boy had washed ashore. Puff arrived to save the day, which made the witch so mad and so. She shook her fist and screamed away, hey, 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 Charm Puff and stuff. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, whatever. And that's basically the entire show <laughs> no, right there. Yeah, and there I don't 15 know if you minutes can, into the show by you that can get a, uh, a picture of this. I don't know. It took me a long time to figure out exactly what Puff and Stuff was. Yeah. I was told, you know, I'm like, dragon, lizard, yep, that's, nah. that's good. He's, <laughs> He's a big thing with cowboy boots. Yeah, that's what he was. He's a big talking lizard with a cousin accent. Yeah. <laughs> Head's too big for a lizard. Well, that was my reference. Well, he was a dragon. Was well, he, he a dragon? He was a dragon. too round for a dragon. <laughs> he was a well, dragon. Well, not a documentary here. <laughs> and we're not, Excuse we're, me. We're not As many of those Sid Marty Croft <laughs> creatures <laughs> did. <laughs> Confused me. Well, anyway, he... <laughs> <laughs> and um, the witch was Witchy Poo, um, played by Billy Hayes, who um, mm -hmm. had done other things. But when they did the movie, they had a whole bunch, and Mama Cass was in the movie. Yeah. I think she was Witch Hazel or yeah, some clever another, little thing like another that. Another witch thing. Another witch thing. Witch thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> witch thing. Witch thing is And there was anyway. Dr. Blinky the Owl. Yeah. Who? <laughs> and he had all these talking things in his office. Who? The book. <laughs> The skull. the skull. The skull with the candle, the candle on his yeah, head. <laughs> on the candle. Uh, let me see. Didn't he have beakers that talked or something like that? Everything too? talked. That would get mm. on my nerves. Well, actually, actually, everything <laughs> on the island was basically alive when you yeah. get right down to it. Everything on the island was alive. Everything could talk. Because they had trees on that island that were like people trees. Well, how would you like somebody coming up and snatching an apple off of you? Well, that was like the, the Indian <laughs> tree and the, and the tree with the big glasses and. Yeah, I remember kind of they had that, that singer, that big, what was it, a bird or a hippopotamus or something that was the singer? Yeah. <laughs> like I said, those things could be. It was like me. a big thing that had, had this afro. <laughs> yeah, I remember she used to do a, 
a thing right after the show came on talking about puffin stuff was brought to you by toy maker toy Little maker bird. hasbro that's who and remember hasbro toys boys and Boy. girls Ooh, they made gi joe <laughs> when he was who sucked this in hasbro? big <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> One of those big, huge toy Beatrice, Beatrice conglomerate type things. I don't know. Somebody's <laughs> no, no got Hasbro, Hasbro now, <laughs> but anyway. And okay. then there was the vulture, the vulture in the um, in the castle. I want to say Seymour, but I don't think that's right. That could be it. But I don't know because there was another show with Seymour in it. Well, there could have been many Seymours. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right. Mm -hmm. But and anyway. the big giant spider thing. Yeah. Was it a right. spider thing? It was a... I we was don't confused. know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> well, let's move on now. That was Didn't a 69... Didn't Marty brothers? Say, it could have been. Or were they fake brothers like the Smothers brothers? No, I suspect that Sid and Marty Croft were True actually brothers. brothers. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look that up in your book. <laughs> That's something they never taught us. The big Sid and Marty Croft book. <laughs> Ooh, that'd be a scary thing. Wouldn't it? All full of big-headed things that don't big look like what they things. are. That, that, that's the whole key to those things. <laughs> big look heads. At, look at Lidsville. Yeah. <laughs> the whole show was nothing but big heads. Well, what do we got next? Really well, confused. They me. weren't just big heads. They were big hats. But let's, before big that, there's the bugaloos. The, the infamous bugaloos. Yeah. Oh, is, are we going chronologically? Yeah, oh let's yeah, go chronologically here. Okay, the bugo. <laughs> you Bug. The bugaloos, the bugaloos, they're in the air and everywhere, Billy flying Barney high, flying that. loose, flying free True? in the summer breeze, happy as a summer breeze. Yeah, he yeah. played a little lightning he bug. He was little Sparky the lightning bug. <laughs> well, the lightning Felix, Felix Sela was on H.R. Uh, Puffin stuff. He was probably one of the little little police guys. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Felix Sela, who Clay. went on to do wonderful things like um, Tweaky. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the robot on <laughs> Buck Rogers. Beedy, 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 beedy. Of course, he didn't have his own voice. It right. was Mel Blanc's <laughs> voice, but... Happen well, there we are. Anyway. Every time there's a robot or something in a cartoon, you can't expect it to have its own voice. voice. you got to give it another voice, That's like right. David Prowse yeah. and uh, James Earl Jones. But, well, there we are. Anyway. Okay. No famous um, voices. The Bugaloos. The Bugaloos were little... They were bugs. Yeah. And they... Uh, <laughs> they were people. They were, well, they were people who... who you dressed up like bugs. Who were dressed up as bugs for the show. Yeah. The whole thing was terrible. And they confusing. had a neat, a neat Bugaloo car which is another one of the great George Barris uh, made-for-TV cars, right. <laughs> which did the, uh, the auto yeah. car thing. That's right. made it on the, the show. show. <laughs> <laughs> Be there! Sunday, Sunday. World of <laughs> Wheels! <laughs> but it was the Bugaloo car, and it was just great. Now, this one starred Bonita Bazaar, who was Martha Ray. Mm -hmm. She was the evil... Movie star? The <laughs> <laughs> <I'm the user. laughs> Now we're going to get sued. Well, I doubt if you ever watch this <laughs> show. We can only dream. <laughs> I mean, if she, we'll, be, we'll be more than pleased if she does. If she wants to come on the show and personally <laughs> denounce Mac us Mark, in the face. Mark, Mark. <laughs> Mark said Mac it. Yeah. Martha Ray, you have an open invitation to come on and smack me. <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> Moving on. Well, they were. They, <laughs> who else was that? Was there somebody who like they sang on that show? Yeah, right? they were. They, they were, were like a, little a band singing group. of bug people, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's right. And none of these names mean anything to them. <laughs> well, that's too bad. They mean something <laughs> to somebody. Joy, harmony, courage, and IQ. Those were the four bugaloos. Was IQ the smart one? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Was courage the courageous one or the cowardly one? Who cares? <laughs> and Harmony, yeah, why that, was, well, the that girl, was the girl, right? Well, that was the guy. Joy was the girl. Hmm. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, okay. Amazing. So, so they well, were The bugs. inhabitants, well, let's see. Um, okay. Um, they lived in Tranquility Forest. The inhabitants, Don't the we bugaloos, all? were four musically inclined bees who buzzed in perfect harmony. <laughs> oh, although now I think, they were bees. Although that I think one of them was a one of them was a grasshopper, if I'm Why not mistaken. Why were they called the beagaloos? They <laughs> <laughs> roll off the tongue as easily. <laughs> well, they were all different kind of bug insects, but um. Then what happened? Okay. Then what was the show? Can oh, we talk about the stupid hat show yet? No, <laughs> there, was, there was also a bat on that show, I believe. I was confused. That, that helped the Martha Ray people. care. Anyway, <laughs> Lidsville. Lidsville. The Ooh. stupid hat show. <laughs> the big stupid hat show. Basically, these Lidsville. big stupid hats this is Lid. ran around <laughs> <laughs> and did whatever they... I was back for a topper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clever lines. Like, but they basically ran around and did whatever stupid job that their stupid hat was. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. 
<laughs> so it was like <laughs> the show of big stupid hat people. This was, this was pretty. This was a pretty bad picture. Yeah, but I, I don't know if you can. If you want to get that or not, I don't know. No, no, no. Just sit back and close your eyes and imagine <laughs> hats <laughs> with feet hats, and big eyes. Hats, and hats. <laughs> hats. They are just. They were. They were basically nobodies because they were just hats, hats and feet. Hats, hats. That's, that's about it. Hats, eyes, feet, big eyes, and, and a see. big mouth to say dumb things. Yeah, there's, there's, there's got, well, here's a party hat. Here's a little. Um, African explorer hat. Yep. Here's a John a Wayne hat. I remember the John Wayne hat. Course, he would he always a... come in and talk like that. It's it probably what, a Rich Little or somebody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> little little Indian Native American hat and football player helmet. The nurse hat. This fire hydrant who wore a fireman's hat. Uh, that was a scary no thing because he had a had a, had a hose hat. coming yeah. out of his nose. <laughs> and the straw hat which was, would always walk and talk in a country voice. <laughs> <laughs> the so stereotypes abound in this show. The dramatic <laughs> opera hat. <laughs> you couldn't have a doctor because doctors don't wear hats. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't have a lawyer because lawyers don't wear hats. That's right. <laughs> Basically, this was the story of a boy whose name was Mark who had gone to Kings Island. <laughs> <laughs> see this magic <laughs> guy. And, and he, walked, he went back to see how the tricks were done and he stepped up on the rim of the hat and the hat grew big. And Well, he walked over to the hat and the hat grew big. So he walked over looking at it because there was something down inside of it. Oh, silly Mark, he fell into the hat <laughs> yep. and ended up in Lidsville, yep. where the um, the magician was actually Hoodoo, who was the evil magician of Lidsville. Of course, played by Charles Nelson Riley. <laughs> yeah, where is he now? <laughs> He's still Bold. doing the Match Game 2000 or whatever it's called now. <laughs> <laughs> That's game of the next generation. See, and I got a life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, one of Sid and Marty Cross' favorite people, Billy Hayes, was back in this one playing Weenie the Genie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like You'd a really rule proud on the show. To go home. Name has Mom, to I'm playing Weenie the Genie. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was oh, probably just a high, a high point of her life. <laughs> Well, what else we got, darn it? <laughs> well, there is another one, and it's not even in here. Well, I am shocked. <gasps> He's yeah. shocked. Now, didn't Sid and Marty Croft, when Kings Island first opened, they had shows there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. how the whole And I remember seeing thing. one in particular that used to just crack me up. It was a big duck, and it was supposed to be Bette Midler. Came out and did this campy act. Of course, it had great big chest on it and when it danced it just it was hilarious <laughs> I, I think they called her duck midler even and she used to come out and then the big theater there collapsed and they didn't have it anymore <laughs> all right on her it was yeah. a tragic <laughs> thing no, it, <laughs> it was during the winter so okay. the duck was flew south <laughs> okay and then, then. When, and then when they decided that darn it it's time to really start uh there was a big push in the mid 70s i think because there were uh, I think the Action for Children's Television and some of those groups were looking at it and saying, you're really putting out dippy cartoons now, which they always they they did always and they always did. have, and now they're dippier than ever. But they said, how about some live action stuff? So, because, well, not that these weren't live action, the other things weren't, but these they were just, just weren't dippy. realistic. So yeah. <laughs> they decided, well, we'll but, have some actual more than one person in the show. We'll do Land of the Lost. Great show. Which was basically about a uh, a family. Well, I, I heard a, I heard an explanation for this that just cracked me up. It was a little kid that came up with the idea for this show. He said, "Well, Dad, why don't you do a show about a group of people, a family that goes out in their back hole, their backyard, and they fall into a black hole that just happens to be in their backyard?" Who <laughs> <laughs> put that there? <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, somebody like David Gerald came along, came along and said, "Well, no, son. If there's a, if there's a black hole in your backyard, it's basically going to suck in the whole planet and every other planet around it. So we'll have to we'll have to work on that idea a little." So what happened was they were they were out on a, a rafting trip <laughs> and they go over a waterfall and on and, and they on just and on. And <laughs> all in they fall into the land of the lost, which is basically a, a prehistoric land that's juxtaposed out of time because everything exists at the same time. So you've got dinosaurs, you've got cave people, you've got... Chaka! You've <laughs> you got a little brontosaurus that eats giant strawberries, and you've got the slea stack, or these big nasty lizards. 
Were they and live in a cave. <laughs> yeah, they were big, Their funny were lizards big. <laughs> with little stubby tails, <laughs> little stumpy stubby tails. And see, the sleeve snack were actually from the future, but yet these everything else. <laughs> well, does, they fell uh, over that waterfall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Waterfall was still there <laughs> thousands of <laughs> years from now, and they fell over. There was it. one that was like further from the future, <laughs> who became their friend because he could um, communicate. Well, he could talk. And the other sleeve snacks just kind of. What do you mean? Chaka could talk. Hi, well, hi, <laughs> There was one that was um, from the future, and I'm trying to remember exactly what its, what its tie was into um, George Takei, either, well, not George, um, Walter Koenig. Yes. He, he either wrote some of the shows or he did the voice for this darn sleeve no, set. I think he wrote some of the stuff. Okay. But anyway, it was, into the biz. it was just really, it was really, <laughs> writing biz. it was really odd. <laughs> Uh, well, really it was so odd that they're remaking it. Yes, they've, right. They've remade the it. The new Land of the Lost. The new <laughs> Land of the Lost is out again. It's, it's on this season, the, well, what, the 91, 92. I don't know. It's not too early in the morning for Cartoon me. season. And basically, um, they've improved the idea a little where it's um, still the family. This time they were out in the desert and they got caught in an earthquake. And uh, the earth opened up. And so they fell and fell and fell, fell and into fell. a land that's displaced from time. <laughs> and so that there's big, there's bigger, nastier dinosaurs and more evil Sleestack. And it wasn't ever your your. Chaka always he, he looks a little better too because before he looked like um. He looked like Clint Howard. Clint Howard, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but now he he looks much better. He's much better now. <laughs> Clint Howard in a bad fur coat. <laughs> With the hair pushed way back. <laughs> what do you mean pushed way back? He's bald. <laughs> well, he is now. I, it was just the shape of things to come. But first, Too much Tranya. Tranya. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, all these obscure references. They're back there. They're the same. Tranya. Walter Kane. <laughs> George Takei. Who are these people? <laughs> okay. And then, well, by golly, we get to the mighty 90s, 1976, where there's the big, the big, um, the big superhero boost is still going on here, and so they decide they're going to have the Croft Super Show. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> I think the other thing was, I think they were just saying none of these concepts are really good enough <laughs> to even, even for a Saturday morning TV by themselves. So, by themselves. So if they don't work, we can just yank it and put another one in. <laughs> Basically, we'll just combine a lot of ideas right. and see how well they do together. <laughs> So you have this Croft Super Show, which is hosted by Captain Cool, cool and the Kongs. Kongs. Oh, they're a singing group. Yeah. <laughs> oddly enough. <laughs> and oddly enough, I saw a puzzle with Captain Cool and the Kongs on it at, at a local toy store. Wow. Recently. I went, look. <laughs> so funny. And there was Wonderbug, a broken down heap of a car that could transfer him into a heroic crime fighting vehicle. Not that that hasn't been done many times. <laughs> Hannah Barbera started that whole thing. <laughs> and by golly, look look what came of it. Knight Rider. Right <laughs> wow. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Then there's Dr. Shrinker, <laughs> who was basically your mad scientist guy who yeah. <laughs> had a beam that could shrink people. <laughs> so it what was kind of like the name. Kind of his name. <laughs> he was forced into it by fate. You know, I got the name Dr. Shrinker. I better build a shrinking ring. Yeah. It's like, you know, maybe maybe that's what, I, well, I won't say that. <laughs> it's a family show. Yes. <laughs> and then there's Electro Woman and Dino Girl. There you go. <laughs> played, Electro Woman played by Deidre Hall. Later become, what is that, Days Days of Our Children or whatever, whatever that show is. What's, what's, what's the Deidre Hall one? Days of Our Lives. Is it Days of Our Lives? Yeah. Was that it? Not, not she's been on that show for years, but, but before enough, that, or, or maybe during that, maybe during a hiatus or something, <laughs> doing that darn, doing that darn uh, Electro <laughs> Woman and Dyna Girl. girl <laughs> and this Dyna Girl looks awfully familiar, too, but gee, Judy, I don't... Judy Strangus. Okay. Yeah. Not that we've ever heard of her before or since, but... Well, she's just got that familiar hairdo. Yeah. yeah. She just looks <laughs> like every American girl. Yeah. <laughs> This was about the time, I guess, that, well, what else was out around that time? Well, other other networks were doing things like Shazam and Mighty Isis, so this was their, yeah. <laughs> this was their <laughs> addition to that. <laughs> it was basically uh, just a whole lot of ideas chunked together, ideas that might not have worked by themselves. Ideas <laughs> and chunked them all together. Last 15 minutes. <laughs> 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 oh, they're gone. <laughs> 
So, well, by golly, I, I guess that's really all that Sid and Marty, well, no, they did something else. What was that? <laughs> mm, just couldn't tell you this. Probably involved big heads. <laughs> big headed animals. And <laughs> mm. they, they must have, I'm sure they did another thing, though. I, I think you're right, now I'm going to see if I can find it. Let's see. I'm sure here. they kept Billy yeah, Barney like for another um, season. A, I think it was almost a, a nighttime show. Yep, that's right. But I cannot remember what it was, just to save it me. It was that good. Yep. It blew your mind. Yeah. Well, <laughs> knock so me goofy. over. Smack my face, Martha Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what it was. Uh, well, that's just too darn oh. bad. <laughs> and they're just sitting out there. You know Sid and Marty Crawford sitting down the edge of their seat. Come, <laughs> come on. on. <laughs> come on. Come on. You can do it. What is hey, it? another show that the crop puppets were on was that darn Barber Mandrell show. Hey, well, hey, that's true. <laughs> kind of in the, um, so in the vein today? of the, um, who knows, the old, the old Jimmy Dean show that used and to have Rolf. <laughs> well, I'd like to drag out old H.R. Puffin stuff wherever he is. Of course, at your local library, you can find those H.R. Puffin stuff tapes for those poor, deprived children who never see, never seen H.R. Puffin stuff. <laughs> And probably will never see it. Who's your friend when things get rough? That's right. Go to your local library. Check out the tapes. Can't do a little because he can't, can't do, do enough. enough. That's right. <laughs> Such a hero. Well. That was probably my favorite just because Jack Wilde was on it. <laughs> and I was a little kid. <laughs> well, I, I really like the nifty songs that they had. But, well, there we are. How nifty. <laughs> <laughs> they were nifty. They were nifty. It was the 60s and 70s. They were nifty. <laughs> Well, looks like that's all the time we got for Vast Wasteland, and thank goodness, because we just ran out of material. So, <laughs> funny how those things work out <laughs> like that. Hard to believe. Well, next time on Vast Wasteland, it's school shows. I have no idea what it means, so find out together. We'll find out <laughs> <the> next time. <laughs> we'll fake it. <laughs> and since we couldn't seem to find some sort of, uh, uh, we couldn't seem to find a, a, a tape of any of the Sid and Marty Croft fine songs, we're going to have a live rendition of one of the songs. Go ahead, Bertie. <laughs> a, a, a reading, actually. A, a, kind of like, a, kinda like a, a literary reading. Take it away, Mr. Neal. In the middle of the summer, in the middle of a park, there began a great adventure for a guy whose name was Mark. He had come to see the magic man along with all the children, and was so began the day that Mark was never to forget. He performed all sorts of miracles, and Mark was so impressed that when the time arrived to go, he lagged behind the rest. And quietly he did return the secret of the hat to learn. But everyone had gone away, and darkness filled the place. The moment that he touched the hat, the room began to glow. And as he put it down and ran, the hat began to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And grow. He was stunned and he was fascinated, but still he had to see. There was something deep inside the hat. What could that something be? And cautiously, each step he took, he climbed upon the brim to look, and all at once the hat began to shake and rock. Look out! Oh! Falling, falling into the hat he fell, <laughs> spinning, turning, <laughs> twirling, twirling. Oh! 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 And when he looked into the sky, he couldn't believe his ears or eyes. Oh, Lidsville is the cuckoo-cookiest, Lidsville is the kicky kickiest Lidsville is the groo-groo-grooviest, Lidsville is the living in friends. If you get a chance to go go there, you'll be glad you did, cuz everyone who goes to Lidsville really flips his lid. Good night, everybody! <laughs>